We're here at Big Bear Bikes in Pickering, North Yorkshire to take a look at the 2023 Trek Fuel EX. It's the Gen 6. There have been some big changes. You're going to want to hear about them. So we're here with Al from the shop. Hello. And Al's going to talk us through what is essentially the buzzword for this bike this year, adjustability. The Fuel EX is more flexible, more adjustable than ever before. So, but I think, Al, let, let's start with what the Fuel EX is, because it's a heritage name in the lineup. <coughs> yeah, it's been, it's around, been around for a long time. Yeah, around for ages for Trek. Yeah. yeah. But you've got a much broader range of mountain bikes in the Trek range now. Yeah, yeah. So where does this sit? So it is their trail bike, which sits in the middle of their kind of um, off-road mountain bike range. So obviously Top Fuel is their cross-country, full yeah. suspension. Um, mountain bike, Fuel EX sits in the middle, and then a few more Endura, um, big travel um, bike, that's your Slash. So yeah, Fuel EX, bang in the middle, um, but this new one has a lot of uh, options to make it suited for different styles of riding. I was going to say, when the big news is that this bike is probably going to appeal to somebody that might previously have considered uh, what was the Remedy and now the Slash. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because it's a much more capable bike with yeah. that adjustability we're talking about. Yeah. So. Um, to look at the bike straight away, people may have noticed you've made a pretty radical change to the bike. Do you want to tell people what that is? Yeah, so it's the smaller back wheel, so I'm running it mullet. Is that a haircut? It's not just a haircut, <laughs> it's, a, it's a setup on, on some bikes nowadays. Uh, it's getting quite popular. So what it is, uh, different size wheels. So 29 on the front, yep. 27.5 in the back. Um, so Why you would you do that? Yeah, what's the, the best of both of, of those two wheel sizes? So a 29er wheel, um, the benefits are rolling over bumps, yep. um, better rolling speed, carry speed better, but the smaller back wheel um, is designed to make the bike handle quicker, turn into corners faster, uh, and just feel a bit more lively. So, yeah, I've, it's the first time I've run mullet. Set and you up. were riding a, a Fuel EX previously, 29er? Yeah, full 29. All my last three bikes have all been 29ers, so. It's something that I've been interested in. Um, this is Trek's first um, bike in their mountain bike range that they've, they've got the mullet compatibility. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I thought, why not give it a try? And what's your first impression then? How did you find it? Uh, first ride, I felt a little bit, well, it felt, it felt quite strange, quite yeah. foreign. So I was, a, I was a little bit weary on if I liked it or not, but the, but the second ride, um, I don't know what it was, but it just seemed to click. Uh, and I've been loving it ever since. So you're a convert. I've only been riding it for a week. It's a brand new bike, um, but it, I'm loving it. It's feeling really fast, really fun. So um, if anybody's watching this video and they go, do you know what, I want to mullet my bike. Yeah. And they, they, they buy this. Yeah. What do they need to do? What changes do they need to make? Um, so there's quite a few changes um, that this bike can do, but to make it mullet, what you need to do is up the front fork travel from 150 to 160. So you're up in the front and Trek have a flip chip system called Mino Link, yeah. which changes uh, the degree of the back of the bike by half a degree. So you can make the bike slacker, so lower the bottom bracket or make it higher um, for more pedaling um, efficiency. Um, but that's what you have to change as well for the mullet back wheel. So you have to put the, the Mino Link in its high position and up the front fork to 160 and then you can put the small back wheel in. So let's come go through those pieces individually then. Um, yeah. The fork, when you talk about upping the fork, is that a change of this entire unit? Uh, no, it's just the, uh, the air spring. So uh, a component that's in one of the lower legs here, um, you can get them for different travel sizes. So all you have to do is just get the 160 travel, take the lowers off, change the air spring and back on. So How much is that? Uh, about 50 pounds. Right, so it's not so, an expensive thing to do. No, not bad at so, all. So from a suspension point of view, the previous, the Gen 5 Fuel EX, that yeah. ran 140, 130? Yeah, so this has gone 10 mil bigger both. Yeah. Um, so this is now a 150, 140. Yeah. But I have obviously up to the front to 160. Yeah. So as a mullet now, this is a 160, 140. So quite a capable bike yeah. um, and mullet, so quite fun. Fantastic. What else do people need to know about the Gen 6? Uh, so there's two other features that you can adjust with the bike. So they've added a new um, feature to the headset. So you've got different headset cups, which means you can run um, three different positions of the bike um, with the headset. So you can run it in steep, neutral or slack. It comes standard with neutral. Um, but if I wanted to slacken the bike out a bit, so it would be better for going downhill, you could get the slack headset cup, which obviously changes the angle with the forks sit out of the frame. But if I wanted it to be a bit more pedal efficient, I would maybe put the steep one in, which would bring the front a little bit closer, but put me more over the front. Yeah. Um, it would be better climbing uphill and that sort so of is stuff. That, is that like a preferred riding style thing or is that a depends what kind of riding you're doing thing? Bit of both. Right. Because you're be racing big. this weekend, don't you? 
Yeah, yeah, I don't normally do racing, um, but we've got a local event called Ardmores, yeah. uh, which is just up the road, um, and me and my mates do it every year. Well, I yeah. did it first time last year. Yeah. Um, it's just a fun, fun day out with your mates. I don't go to race, I just go to ride my bike yeah, on, have fun. on yeah. new tracks. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to doing it on this. But you'll put that in its slackest position then, presumably, for uh, racing? No, or? so I'm just going to keep, obviously, the, the adjustments that I've done yeah. is, is how I'm liking it. I'm just going to keep it in its, in its neutral position for now. Yeah. But I think just the 160 fork and the mullet wheel is going to suit my style of riding because yeah. I want it to be a bit more capable yeah. um, on, on some more aggressive trails. So I'm looking forward to, to gelling with that, spending more time with this smaller back wheel yeah. to get used to it. Um, but I'm, I'm loving it at the minute. It's a lovely looking thing. I'm going to come to your upgrades in a minute, but let's just stick on the bike as they come as standard. So this is um, the carbon fibre frame. Yeah. So where is this in the lineup for the Fuel EX? Um, so the Fuel EX comes in three aluminium yeah. options. So you get a five, a seven, and an eight. Yeah. And then you go into carbon. So this is the 9.7, which is entry level carbon. Then yeah. you go 9.8, 9.9. Um, so the frames on each, so the, the aluminium frame on those is the same. You just get a different spec. And then this is the same frame uh, in carbon as all the others, but it's just specification changes. And this color is superb. It's called crimson. Yeah. So, first time I've seen this colour in a carbon um, mountain bike in, in the shop since I've worked here. They've done it in a few carbon road bikes, yep. but I've never seen it in a mountain bike frame. So, I thought I'd try it. I wasn't sure on the pictures, but now I've, now I've got it built, I, I really That's like it. That's a great it. choice. It looks mm. absolutely, absolutely mega. So, let's just go through then. So, the 9.7, what does that come with in terms of specification as standard? So, standard, uh, so you get a Fox suspension. So, you get a Fox 36 right. rhythm fork. Yep. So, the rhythm fork is the entry level Fox 36 fork, but it still performs really well. Yeah. I've ran the factories and the rhythms. I, you know, I can't tell much difference, me. Um, and I, I just, I like the, the, the simplicity of not having all the different dials to turn. Yeah. So I actually like that fork. Um, and then you get the Float X rear shock, which is a, is a real good shock. Um, you've got the piggyback to kind of manage the heat. Um, so yeah, good suspension platform, and then it comes with Bontrager kit, um, Shimano SLX and XT on the gears, um, and SRAM um, brakes, um, but I've upgraded those. You've made quite a lot of upgrades. I've done a few, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So look, it's your bike. Do you want to talk us through them? Where do you want to start? Wheels would be the biggest one. Um, so I've put the new Hope hubs on there, the Hope Pro 5s. That's something that I've wanted to, I demoed a set the other month, and I noticed a huge difference, actually. They, they roll, they just glide. Um, when you're freewheeling, they're really, really good, noticeable, which I didn't think I would notice. Okay. Um, so I've gone for the new Hub Hubs, laced them onto the DT Swiss 511 rims, which are DT Swiss is like downhill, um, burly, strong rim. Yeah. So a nice, I wanted a nice, reliable wheel set. Yeah. So, and then pointed out with the silver spokes. Yeah. Um, retro, bit, old bit retro. Cool. Yeah. Um, Bobby inspired me from the workshop to do that. He did it recently on his, and I really liked it, actually. Um, big credit to Bobby on building me these wheels. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm loving the look of it, really. It's because it's black and silver. I went for the silver accents. It looks really smart. And then your tyre choice? So I run Maxxis. Um, I've always run Maxxis. So in the summertime, I run the Asagai on the front. Um, and DHR, I run all year round. It's just a really good tyre. Just it, it stops really well. Nice and grippy as well, so. Superb. Yeah. Um, so right, okay, where should we go from there? So we've covered wheels, covered tires. So the upgrades I've done, other than that, so I upgraded the brakes to yep. Shimano XT. I really like the feel of Shimano, powerful brakes. Um, and then also I just finished it with all the Bergtech stuff. So a nice little discreet one would be the Bergtech rear axle. Yeah. So that's for the Trek bikes there. And in, in, I think that red works really well with this bike. Uh, the Bergtech chainring, um, Ergon saddle, uh, unreleased Bergtech item. How did you get that? Uh, so at our recent uh, demo weekend up at Dolby Forest, yeah. uh, Bergtech supported us, came along, really nice. And uh, Dan had some prototypes, um, some seat collars which they're working on. So this one fit a Trek, and he said, why don't you put it on yours? So you're so, the only person rocking that at Dolby? Uh, at Dolby, probably, yeah. yeah. I think there might be one or two others uh, in the country. But yeah, Dan said, not many about, so thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, Dan. Um, Just go to Ergon, because Ergon are mm. fairly new in the shop, right? Yeah, we've started doing Ergon in probably the past six months. Um, and they are just specialists in comfy contact points. Yeah. So grips, saddles, just making you comfy on the bike. Yeah. Um, so I thought I'd try one of the saddles. So I measured myself on the saddle sizer, recommended me the small medium, and this is kind of their enduro saddle. So 
really comfy. Uh, comfy. Not just saying that either. I've tried a few. Well, to be fair, also Matt, he he, he went Ergon, didn't he? For yeah, racing. Few, few, everyone that we've recommended it to has uh, have been complimentary of it. Yeah. So yeah, really good. Superb. And then just general finishing, finishing kit. kit. So you know the Bergtech handlebars, stem, and all the spacers, just to tie in all the colours um, of the bike, really. And I, and I run clipless pedals, so I've got the um, Crown Brothers Mavic. DH pedals. Yeah. Well, the whole thing looks absolutely superb. Um, and I yeah. mean, you're, you've you've put quite a lot of time and effort, haven't you, <clears> into bringing you know Industry Nine, Ergon, Bergtech, Hope. You know, there's now yeah. that whole upgrade scene and opportunity is yeah, bigger yeah. here at the shop than it's been before. Yeah, no. I mean, I've I've always done it to all my bikes. It's it's a great way to personalise your setup of bike. Um, so we've got it all in all in the shop, and yeah. you know you can do it however you feel. So yeah, really good. So there you go, guys. That is the 2023 Trek Fuel EX, the Gen 6. It is the most adjustable bike um, in the EX range there's been. We do have these at Dolby now okay. on the higher fleet. So our sister shop, Dolby Forest Cycle Hub, have just got a range of Fuel EXs on their higher fleet. So if you want to go take one out for a spin around Dolby, I would definitely recommend it because it's a, it's a good bike. And have you got these in the shop? This is uh, yours, so this is So sale. this is mine, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, we do have the, we've got the new Fuel EX8 uh, in a real nice uh, penny flake colour yeah. in the shop at the minute. So yeah, you can come in and have a look at them. Yeah. yeah. So there you go, guys. Fuel EX here at Big Bear Bikes in Pickering in North Yorkshire. Get yourself down here. Yeah, cheers. Cheers.